very much. I'm going to see you. Uh, I'm happy to be back here in a, a different capacity. So now that I was uh, pushing people to manage time and also try to manage mine so that I did not take uh, too much time because mine is more of um, just uh, sharing uh, some thoughts on what we think should be the um, or is the role of uh, civil society organizations, the NGOs, uh, CBO, as far as water loss management is concerned. This will take you uh, a little bit away from what you've been hearing, you know, the meters, the smart meters, land revenue water, uh, the infrastructure, IoT, and all that, to, you know, just the general things that happen while you are at the companies, uh, what happens within the communities, and what happens at management level, you know, the policy makers, uh, the government, the rest of the consumers, what usually happens as you deal with the meters, as you supply them um, with water, because I understand that most of us here are from water companies, and the tech companies, uh, the telcos, the communication companies, and all that, but then we go beyond that when it comes to the civil society uh, organizations. So very key uh, things that I think, or that we think that we have been contributing uh, as far as water loss management is concerned. One of them is um, governance. As we've always said, uh, the issue of the crisis of water, a big percentage of it lies within uh, the governance of the thing. There's issue of resource mobilization and uh, funding. You know, we talk about the NGOs. Uh, behavior change, and I'll be speaking more about that. And then the, uh, the duty bearers and the rights holders. You know, the government and the consumer and whoever else is in between. Sometimes do they have opportunity to meet and have uh, a dialogue? Do they even know? Uh, each other. I think we'll be uh, seeing that. So straight on to governance. Like we said, it is governance being mainly how things are managed, you know, how the affairs of your organizations are managed. This is government, this is the water utilities, this is, you know, the NGOs, this is the civil society, and everybody that is involved. The civil society has been very key um, as far as uh, Developing, you know, governance models are concerned. Uh, the enabling environment, which usually supports how you govern your utilities and how you know, government operates and all that. Uh, corporate governance uh, models, we are talking about uh, WASREB coming up with guidelines, you know, for say, rural water supply guidelines, the corporate governance and all that. These are things that we have worked with them. The civil society has funded some of these things so that when they come to us or when they come to you, uh, they have been refined. Some of them have, test, have been tested uh, in different areas or different uh, places. When you talk about the Water Act uh, 2016, the Water Act uh, 202, we are talking about uh, the Water Policy 2021 right now, which is out by the, the National Water Policy. All these documents that support our governance, how we behave within the uh, sector, they have been developed or they were supported by the civil society, by the various NGOs that uh, you know. And therefore, they spell out the framework through which we work. And these are very uh, uh, key documents that we all need to, to refer to. Just recently, we had uh, what we call the Water Regulations uh, 2021, 20, uh, if you remember, uh, last year. These regulations happened to come out um, during the time when COVID was uh, at its peak. And there were things that had been suggested there by uh, the ministry. And if you remember, uh, KWASnet, we called out to the government and asked them that, you know, the rates that you're putting for water abstraction are quite high. And at the end of the day, this is going to be passed down to the consumer. And it's going to be heavy, and especially during this time of COVID. And we are happy, actually, the Ministry of Water listened to us. We summoned them through the, you know, the, the Committee on Water Environment uh, in Parliament. 
and we had a discussion. We didn't need to go far. We discussed, and this uh, was sorted, although many people may not have known, and then later I think the regulations were, were, were passed. So that has happened, and that is some of the role that people play. Um, resource mobilization and funding, and you realize that I put there some very key photos to provoke um, your thoughts. On the first uh, slide, I put a photo of um, you know a toilet, a disability-friendly toilet. And then this, this is a uh, in one of the informal settlements. This is supposed to be toilet, and uh, if you check on the other side of the toilet, you will see your infrastructure, the pipes, passing through there, in some of the photos. So what happens in these places? You know, you are talking of safeguarding the meters, safeguarding the infrastructure safeguarding all the investments that you put in these particular places. But how is that done? There's a behavior that we have observed that I'll be talking about uh, shortly. But in resource mobilization, I think there's the issue of key funding, I mean funding, like the Kenya pulled um, uh, water fund. No, just to cover the financing gap that we've had. There are other models that have been around, you know, like the Keship model to support just sanitation issues and access to water. Most of you, I think you understand um, organizations or maybe programs like Washfin that you've worked with or they've supported some of these uh, companies, you know, to access funding from microfinance institution. I think the in the morning I saw Engineer Kenya here. We, he presented some of the issues that they went through when they were trying to access uh, funding and this, they were supported by um, one of these uh, programs. So. The donor funding that comes into the sector, the grants, the various loan facilities are done by uh, you know, our donors, the CSOs, the NGOs, and all that. And we think this is a good thing. Now, uh, behavior change and management. And I think what I've heard within this session, there's a lot to do with the issue of behavior. And to us, this is the behavior of both the consumer, the behavior of the policymaker, the behavior of government. Now, we've talked about uh, theft, people stealing meters, you know, the illegal connections, vandalism, and all these things that are happening within uh, community. If you look at that photo, there's a pipe that is almost going through the door. And this photo we picked somewhere this is an uh, infrastructure. Actually, during COVID, NMS was putting up tanks to supply water within the informal settlements. So what happened? Somebody fenced off that area that NMS had put up a tank, and they made it their place. So that means that nobody else can access the water except them. So what is happening to the behavior of our consumers? And what is happening at government level, you know, the, the policy makers. We have what we call the collaborative behaviors that we use within the sector. You know, we talk of enhanced government leadership, uh, strengthened use of systems, you know, the systems that you're talking about, uh, the smart meters uh, and all this. We ask governments to increase uh, budgets and funding towards these uh, issues, the use of information the data that you will be collecting from the smart meters. Governments can use this, and we have always been asking them to use this. Back on the consumers, there are some issues we've observed within the community, uh, what you call consumers, especially within the urban centers. And often we ask uh, the water companies that we have worked with, do you take time sometimes to visit um, these areas and see uh, what is happening? the spaghetti pipes within the informal settlements, we've seen so many of this. The legal connections, we've seen so many of this. And recently in a study that we did, there's something we discovered called um, uh, sextortion in urban settlements. This is basically women and girls are being violated when they go to access water or wash uh, facilities. The water vendors are taking advantage of them. Some of them are raped. 
some of them are touched inappropriately and all this, then we ask you as the water companies, you know, the kiosk through which you supply water, the infrastructures that you put in place, do you know what is happening within those communities? I think it would be important for us to, to step out of you know, our offices and check that what is happening within the communities because we have seen this and these are really weird behaviors that are happening out there around water facilities that we may not know and we would want this uh, to, be, to be addressed. On government, there's also a behavior that we observe. You're talking about non-revenue and people paying their bills. So there are some studies that we did and we found that uh, a good number of government institutions are not paying their bills. And usually we are not afraid of uh, talking about this. Prisons and such places are not paying their bills. And I think you as water companies, you know, and you have, you know these struggles. So these are the things that we are talking about. We try to work with government so that these behaviors can change. And finally, uh, we are talking about the interface between uh, the water companies, uh, the policy uh, makers, and the people that you serve. We encourage that uh, the water companies, can we create forums where your customers can talk to you, where you can interact with your customers, same to uh, government, uh, policy makers, and the people that we work with. Do you have forums where, in, that in the last slide, the, the, the previous slide, kindly, that these women who are fetching water, if you look at that last slide, do they even know their rights as far as water is concerned? Do they know how much you charge? Do they know which number to use if they want to talk to you as the water company? So we want there to be that interface so that there's the fish and service and people are able to uh, access uh, water facilities. So the final slide, the question I'm asking today is that where do we go uh, from here? So being 2022, we are piloting the smart meters. We want to reduce the non-revenue and all that. Are we going to have a phase very soon where this smart metering, reducing non-revenue, is going to be adopted to a large scale? That question was asked here, that majority is being piloted, but nothing is being picked, or just very little is being adopted. Are we going to have a time where adoption happens at a large scale? Are we going to have a time where upscale will be done so that we see this across the country, not just in Eldoret or in a few places. And by 2030, are we going to have a situation whereby at least 80% of our communities have access to water and sanitation? I think we have the answers here, and uh, these are things that I would like us to think about, and uh, I want to thank you uh, very much. Uh, Bonasio.